evokes an emotion for the listener. It evokes an emotion for the listener, whether they you want them to join your team, because if they're if they're vested or if they're they've got an emotion in the story, uh, your story, then they're going to be just as more uh, involved and dedicated. Whether it's your investor, and I'll tell you, investors. Uh, they tell you, you know, deals go to due diligence to die or to be done because they're either just, okay, let's just finish this because we're in, we love this story, we love these founders, or they're going into due diligence just to say, to find a reason why, you know, you've got a great idea, we love your team, but we're really not in. So the story is really important. And so when you're on your venture now, your adventure to start building your company or going about to begin or find investors or find co-founders, I want you to really consider the story, what's motivating you. It's also important for you as a person. So when we talk about a story, there's a couple of things you do want to package within it. And this is kind of like the verbal portion or the verbal um, version of your pitch. So you've got your team, your opportunity, the problem, the solution, what's your advantage, your business model, and the ask, right? And of course, in the business model, you have financials and a lot of other things. But before you get into all of these different check marks, I want you to really think deep down, why am I doing this? Is it something personal? Is there an experience you had? And I'm going to talk about mine. Is there an experience you had when we, you were younger that really drove you to do what you're doing? Younger, earlier, older, whatever, it doesn't matter. Is there, an, is there a previous experience? Um, the second one is, was there an aha moment? Were you in a meeting? Were you with a client? Were you uh, at, a, at a class and you thought of, oh my God, if I could do this, I could change the world and do this. Whatever it may be, you need to find that story and you need to build on it and share it. And then use that, it helps you to center yourself as well. You know, one of the biggest challenges as a founder or as an entrepreneur is knowing your drivers and why you're doing what you're doing. Now, there's always, oh, we want to build a business, we want to make money, but let's be, let's be real. There is an un underlying core driver for what you're doing, and you need to find that for yourself. And so I'm going to share part of my story with you now to tell you this. So I come from a very academic family. All my uncles are PhDs. My, my brothers and sisters are all either masters or PhDs. And during my engineering courses, I recall having a conversation with my uncles about why is our family all in the United States, not in the Middle East. I'm originally Syrian. And it was it was really disheartening for me to hear that there was no opportunity for anybody of our family, whoever, and, and, and there's not us, but anybody who advances to degrees to come back and do anything in the world of innovation or research and development in the Middle East. I mean, at that time, even now, we are, I think, one state in the U.S. outspends the entire Middle East in research funding. And so if you think about this talent, all of this amount of talent that is from this part of the world, it's immigrating, it's migrating away from here because other than teaching or getting a position in some company because of your PhD, you're not gonna use this value. And I thought it was insane that as a part of the world that has majority of the resources, even if we talk about the GCC, the majority of uh, uh, resources, both uh, economical as well as technical people or talent, in addition to natural resources. So remember, you've got uh, talent, you've got economical, and you've got this. All of this is being exported out because. So I, I took it personal. I said, well, if I. I want to do something that changes this. I want to make a difference in this. And along the way, I did multiple businesses. I had the wrong investors. I had the wrong co-founders. I had the wrong business idea. And some of them were successful. I made some money, alhamdulillah. Some of them were not successful. 
Uh, but what I did learn is I learned every step of the way what I did wrong, what I was doing. And Nibble is the culmination of this experience and knowing exactly what I just said. And that was to build a business that transforms data into intelligence, recognizing that data is the future, recognizing that whatever you do, if you build it around data, you'll have a business. More importantly, I wanted it to be a center of innovation and development from this region, the Middle East, North Africa, MENA region, to the rest of the world. Meaning, I didn't want to go to the U.S. and raise funds and build a center in the U.S. I didn't want to go sell to customers in the U.S. I wanted to build a company based from here, in this part of the world, headquartered in this part of the world, that's developing and innovating from this part of the world to, to the rest of the world. And, and that was the biggest driver. And so when you come down to the core, there's a very clear core message here. Core message of why we're doing what we're doing. Core message of why it's so important to continue down a very difficult path. If you're talking about developing a technology, a deep tech development company from funding, from, from resources, from talent, everyone I come across says, well, why don't you just do it outside? It's hard to find people. It's hard to get invested. I mean, that's exactly it. Is because we, if you're not the change, then why you can't complain? So when you think about this, think about your origin story, think about your motivations, your personal story, okay, and tie this into what's driving you to do what you're doing, and how that's going to make you stronger, better, more successful in general, and then within your organization and your business. It's also important because being an entrepreneur is difficult. Starting a business is very difficult. You're going to have times where you think, like, what the hell am I doing? Excuse my language, but why am I even doing this? Look at all my friends who took jobs. They're now all making good money. They've bought their houses. I've just sold my house so I could fund the next six months of, of my business. I just sold my car to do this. I don't. And it's really important to know your personal driver because that's what it, what's going to keep you going. Um, but I will make one suggestion, and I'm actually writing a, a post about this. This is just a personal recommendation. It's like a double-edged sword. Being an entrepreneur means believing in what you're going to do without a shadow of a doubt and going beyond all of the challenges and, and failures to continue to pursue this opportunity. But sometimes you just have a bad idea. I mean, this is life. You need a guiding North Star. A person, a one mentor, even two are better. Um, mentors that have an unbiased approach to tell you. Your friends will tell you either way. Some friends don't want you to succeed, so they'll tell you how your idea is terrible. Some friends will want you to succeed and tell you how you've got a great idea, even if it may not be. Uh, your family will always support you, but you need somebody who is an independent mentor, advisor, whatever you want to call them, that can tell you, okay, that's a terrible idea. You're doing something wrong or you're doing, this is a great idea, but you need to figure out what you need to do. This saved my life. I built my organization. I've got a great board of advisors. So that's just a side note since we're talking about being an entrepreneur, but it's really important to have a guiding North Star. Now, we come back to, to, to this. Having your story and your core also helps you in these difficult times. So if I if I didn't have that, I wouldn't say, well, you know what? I got, I, a couple of years ago, a year or two, a year and a half ago, I got an incredible offer from a company I didn't want to work for, but they gave me a, a fantastic offer. I mean, it was very big. And so you think to yourself, if you're not vested and you don't know why you're personally doing this beyond that this is a great idea, beyond that this makes money, what is the real reason? that you're doing this, if you know this, it'll come out as a passion. When you speak, everybody will hear it, and people love people who have passion. But more importantly, it'll help you make a lot of decisions. So uh, I didn't. I wanted to leave a little bit of time in for you guys to ask questions, but the most important is building a story. If you want a great book, it's very cheap. It's called Get Backed. G-E-T, backed, B-A-C-K-E-D, talks about how to build the story, how to generate a narrative. And I didn't want to spend today's session telling you this because there's so much you can read about. I wanted to share with you 
why it's so important to actually invest the time to build your story personally and uh, and for the company. So check out the book, Get Back. It's very uh, low. I think it's a cheap book, like $10 online. And you can read it online. It's got everything. And it gives you some uh, examples of the top 10 companies or 20 companies of how they built their story and how their pitch deck aligned to their story. So it's a fantastic book. Uh, I think it gives us a little bit of time here for Q&A, a lot of time, which I'd like to open the floor and then I can talk a little bit more. Does anybody have any questions or, or, or comments? You're on mute, Judy, we can't hear you. Is there a way for the for the participants to ask questions or no? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, we can. Sorry, I was on mute. Yeah. So uh, feel free if you, anyone has any question, you can open your microphone or you can type on the chat window. Okay. So maybe we can uh, continue. Yeah. Maybe they still digest it. Yeah. Okay, so different types of stories. Let's talk about the different types of stories. Okay, first one is is your origin story, which is what took you to build the business or why you're doing what you're doing. This is really important, and this is what allows you to share your personal driver cause. All right, uh, elements of this story. It's here's you where you were. You were living life. It's perfectly normal. And then you suddenly saw you had this idea, call, whatever. You accepted this idea and, and what it gave you a new purpose. And this is a person, an, an, an important one. Then there's also a different type of story, like a customer story. Okay. And you give the customer of the question uh, of the story about the journey of a customer in your problem, in your situation. So, you know, meet. Uh, John. John can't buy a car because it's too far from him. And here's here's how it and you give the story of John. Another one is an industry story. And so the industry story is about what's happening in this industry that you're going to change. You know, those are three big different types of stories. It's uh, I saw a question about the book is get backed B A C K E D. Okay. And I'll type it up in the chat. It's um, it's a great uh, great book. So those are the like some types of stories: your personal orange story, origin story, the um, customer story, so the adventure or the customer goes through with you, or your industry story, what you're doing to change the industry. And it's great to sometimes combine a couple. What what made you want to do this? What made you do that? Uh, uh, what's your customer journey? And then a great story is always, uh, always has a very interesting catch in the beginning and then a good story arc to the end. So think about your story and what's important to you, why you're doing what you're doing to get what got you there, number one. And then number two is your customer story. What is there to get into and then the industry story, how you're changing the industry or what you're doing. Those are all really important. And it helps you also take think of things from a different perspective. It helps you think of the uh, industry to think of uh, why it's changing the industry, why you're changing the customer pro, uh, experience, or why you want to do what you're doing. Those help you understand and your message and allow you to clarify your message a little bit better as well. Any questions? I can jump into a couple of more things and I'll share.
Okay. Yeah, you can continue. Okay, so here's here's what I'm going to do. I want to share and I uh, go through our our pitch deck as nibble. Something that's a little bit it'll give you the perfect idea of why there's an importance in the story. And I'm going to pitch it to you guys just as I, I would. And this is alhamdulillah a successful pitch. OK, it's done a good job. Uh, get us to where we are today. And. Okay, I think you should see the full screen. Do you see it as a full screen now? Can you just confirm? It's coming up, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so exactly. this is great. So this is the story. And it's really important. You know, I usually start off the pitch discussion talking about yeah. the origin story of why. Sorry? It's still coming up. Okay, now we got it. Excellent. Okay, then let me change something one second. I'll share my screen. And then if I play this whole thing now, you should be able to see everything. Now it's better, right? Yeah? Yes, it's perfect. perfect. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and so this is the, the slide that ties into the story of why we're doing what we're doing. It's becoming a source of technology innovation from Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates exporting to the rest of the world. OK, so tied in with UAE's vision and Saudi's vision. And more importantly, is, is about not building a unicorn. And this is a personal statement, but a camel. Again, this is about the industry. So we want to build a sustainable, profitable and gigantic organizations developing technology and innovation. So when you talk about the story, you don't want to just read through slides. I start here talking about my origin story, how talking to my uncles and my family, I realized and to my friends, I realized that there was no opportunity or there weren't many opportunities for people with advanced degrees to contribute into technology and innovation and development of value in an economy in our in the Middle East. And that's what drives into this. And that's really important. People love to hear a story. And this is not about selling. This is about properly conveying your message. If you're out to try to sell your idea, then you're going about this wrong. You shouldn't you should you should believe in the idea and, and tell the story and the story should sell itself. And that's exactly what we wanted to do here. So think about this in terms of that perspective of telling your story. So the origin story is here. This is the first step where we talk about creating a center for innovation. Here's where we talk about how we began our adventure. We grew the company and now we're scaling and growing. OK, uh, this is the industry. And then here's where we tie into the industry story. OK, so I remember I told you multiple stories. This is the part where we talk about the industry. This is the traditional industry way. So Think about customer Joe, if they wanted to do traditional machine learning, they have to go through, have historical data, historical outcomes, they have to go through all of these processes here, items two through seven, and these are, you know, they're time consuming, sometimes can take months or, or longer if you have a larger data set. And then here comes Nibble, where we've automated this entire process using AI, takes a nine month process or six month process or a two year process into a few minutes or a few hours. So. Hey, this is the industry story. So you can see here I've tied in multiple types of stories. I've tied in the origin story to tell the personal incentive of why we're doing this as a company. And then I've tied in the industry story of what's traditional and why we're doing things different. Now, it's important to not just tell stories, but to give uh, evidence and facts, right? So here's where we talk about how our technology functions and how we've changed the industry. OK, and I always tie back about how we're different, how we don't have a third party technology. We build everything in house. Very important to tie in with this story. OK, all of the outcomes of this, the team. Very important, and you can see how even our titles tie in with the story. OK, so 
the queen of bees, the world builder, the electronics connoisseur, the oracle. It's part of us. As a, and this is our corporate culture. This isn't just to make things up. This is how we organize as a company. Remember, I talked about advisory board. This is my strategic advisory board. Lane Sloan, that's a typo. So good thing I practiced it with you guys. Uh, Lane's former CFO of Shell. I talk to Lane every single week. We have a one hour session. It took me three and a half months to convince Lane to become my advisor because you want that type of person, somebody who values their time so important that they need to know. This. And by the way, Lane could charge probably $5,000 an hour as a consultant. Okay. Um, we pay him almost nothing, to be honest, but it's an important thing that there is a transaction to value that person's time, but also for them to, to value that you are committing something so that they put in. Shri Prakash Pandi, also we talk every couple of weeks. Uh, he's uh, our first investor. Nasser Nahas is my father, my biggest uh, mentor and advisor. We talk probably every day. And Abe is uh, somebody I met early, early, early on. A very successful business person who's been through multiple uh, big positions in, in, in the industry and has you know always been a great source of advice. These are the people that I, after a long time, I trusted and I knew that if I tell them, hey, I think that, you know, we should build a space rocket to tell me, no, be quiet, you're wasting your time chasing things that don't make sense, focus on this. Or if I tell them we've got a great idea, they'll say, you know what, this is good. Why don't you think of this? That's really important. I'll tell you today, without this strategic advisory board, which is different than your board of advisors, uh, we would be in a completely different place as a company because when it was very difficult, when I had no idea what we were going to do or payroll was not going to happen or, you know, customers were delaying payments or not signing contracts, they were the ones that helped me understand that we're doing the right thing we need to do. And when I was doing something wrong as, as a leader of an organization, they were the ones that came and told me, you know, pointed it out to me, you're not delegating, you're doing this. And I've learned a lot. So it's very important. So if we go back again, remember, here's your origin story, the industry story, building on why your technology is great, your amazing team and your advisors, where you are and what you've achieved. Okay, so think of this in context. I didn't want to spend today giving you my presentation. I wanted to show it to you about the story. Most importantly, wrap up with going back to the most important value, our origin story. So being a center of technology and development and innovation from the Middle East to the rest of the world, being a scalable, sustainable, profitable organization. So this is an example of that, and I hope that it gave you some insight. Um, I'm very happy to answer questions uh, even later if you think of them. Uh, Judy and the rest have my contact info. Uh, I do mentor a lot of uh, startups and entrepreneurs to the Dubai Future Foundation, which is where we came up through as a company. So I appreciate that this, this is what got us to where we are, and I'm always excited to support and help others do the same. Uh, any questions? Yeah, so while waiting for the questions from the floor, uh, I think I'd like to ask a question, if I may. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I look beyond uh, the presentation, which is very, very good, and what you're doing is very inspiring. Um, but something got into my back is like, um, how did you choose the name uh, Nibble? Sorry for Nibble. pronouncing it wrong in the first place. Uh, it's uh, Nibble, and then I saw you have a product called uh, Nubila. And also the color of yeah. choice, it's, it must be something that is connected to your origin story that uh, is not told before. <laughs> yeah, so uh, actually, it's a great question, and it is part of the origin story. So Nibble came by because it was actually in a, we, were, we had already set up the company, okay? We didn't have a name. And uh, here's, if you want to go back to the, the actual origin story, I sold my last venture to my partners because we weren't aligned in where we wanted to go. I wanted to build this global company. We were making money and they were happy staying in, in only one place. And so I spent 
uh, about a year and a half cherry picking a team. And then I picked that whole team and we all went to Dubai. Okay. Uh, and in Dubai, I told them, I brought you all here because I've talked to each one of you. Now you all meet each other. We're building this company. This is what I what we want to do. I know it has to be transferring intelligence. And we so we came up with the whole concept of the company together there and around table in the Dubai Emirates Towers, thanks to the Dubai Future Foundation, um, because we were part of that cohort. Now, at the end, we said, all right, guys, well, I've got a silly name that I don't want to use. So what do we call it? And it was one of my co-founders, Sufyan, who found the name. So Nibble is actually the smallest measurable size of data. So if you know bits and bytes, right? So one byte is eight bits. And nibble is half a byte or four bits. Now, uh, of course, technically it's spelled N-I-B-B-L-E or N-Y-B-B-L-E. I told them, no, it's got to be really cool. Four letters, spell it weird so that it's catchy. So that's the marketing, and we came up with Nibble, N-Y-B-L. But uh, definitely part of the origin story. The purple comes from this. So uh, there is something called the color emotion guide, and it tells you what every color invokes in, in terms of the type of emotion. And I'm going to put this up here so everybody can see it because it's very cool. Okay? shows you all the different logos in the world. Okay? And it shows you how cool that we don't realize how the colors of logos are broken up by what they want you to know. Look at Balance, look at Apple. When you look at, think of the companies in gray, you realize, wow, yes. Look at the companies in blue, Trust, Dell. Look how many uh, financial, look at Medicine, Pfizer, IBM, you know, Ford, Big, American Express, GE. We wanted to be creative, imaginative wise. This is, and it was between red and purple because I want to be bold, but we thought that the purple would be a great way because we are being creative and we're going on a, taking an adventure. And so we used the purple as, as our one. Also, I like Taco Bell a lot, so that was a big driver. Well, I'm glad I asked that question. Is an extra, uh... Uh, you know, inside that uh, you give here. Uh, we have a question from Fachit uh, Srur. Can the background story be based on a fictitious person just so that we can have a story around it? Can the background a fictitious? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, hold on. Not the origin story. That's fake. That means I, uh, the purpose is fake. Um, origin story should be personal to you. You're the founder. Why are you doing this? Until you ask that question, you should, until you can answer that question, you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. So, no, that one shouldn't be fake. Your customer journey can be, absolutely, your industry journey can be a fictitious character. Meet Joe. Joe doesn't know how to do machine learning, but he wants to do this. Absolutely. But the background story needs to be about you. So, what is it that you want to do, Sanchika? What are you going to, why did you think of it? There's a story there. Uh, and it doesn't have to be this whole cute story, mad, no. Just share the, uh, what's the word? Um, be truthful. People like people who are being truthful. And when you're being truthful, things come out as passion. And when that comes about, people see that you're in love. So don't, you don't have to come up with this very cool marketing sexy story. No, not at all. Just be honest to the truth of why you're doing that. That alone can, um, brings people to think of the greatness of what you're doing. So I would read that, yeah. And then yeah, I, the second it, part, we see, sorry, go ahead. In, in Nibo, sorry, there's a camel. Of course, the camel is fictitious, but it represents the characters of the, the Middle East the origin of, of the company. Yeah. And the, actually, that camel is a very, very personal thing to us as well, okay? This is very controversial. Here's why. I, I don't like the word unicorn. I actually, I hate the word unicorn because... It is ruining the uh, mentality of investors to invest in truly tech innovating. And listen, I love all of these companies, Kareem, all of these, they're amazing, all right? But how many delivery companies can we have? How many billion dollar delivery companies can there be? It's like every, now, if you're not, if you're not e-commerce or last mile delivery or micro mobility, investors won't look at you. 
well in this part of the world. And I think this is a big challenge because if we want to continue to innovate and build and add value, economic value of long lasting jobs, you need this because until now, not one of these unicorns is profitable or sustainable. It's fundraising to build. Again, mad respect, they're doing some incredible things, but we need to diversify. And so I wanted to be clear to anybody who's joining us as a team or as an investor, you're not going to be joining us because we're building to the next investment round. We're out to build real technology, sustainable, profitable growth, which is a whole different approach than spending hundreds of millions of dollars to grow at any cost that may or may not be sustainable. Bit controversial, uh, but I like the camel because as, a, as an animal, it's resilient, right? It can stay for a long time without water. It can roam in very harsh environments. But it's a giant, real creature. It's not mythical like a unicorn. It exists and it's sustainable. And that's that's our goal internally. If if um, you know when we talk to our team, all of our team is you know this message of where we're going. Every single person knows it. It's embedded into their ethos within the company. And so it's very simple. Is what you're doing contributing to this company to be sustainable, profitable, and be a source of innovation? Yes, keep doing it. No, change what you're doing. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. No Mahas. Uh, I think keep those questions coming. Uh, maybe we have time later on and we can answer those questions. Uh, now is the time for Dr. Saeed al Dahiri to answer some of those questions from the previous week or maybe you have received or you have uh, uh, reviewed some of the submissions and you would like to give some advice for them. Um, thank you, Judy. Thank you. Uh, it was really nice uh, to listen to Noor uh, from an entrepreneur um, side. Uh, I guess what he talked about really touches the essence of being an entrepreneur and what an entrepreneurship is all about and definitely there's you know a lot of lessons from from his story and i could not agree more with the, with with you know yeah that for an entrepreneur for someone who's who wants to be into this field you have you have to have a story you have to build your story and all that and i have spoken about this uh, I, I i guess uh, you know last time um, uh, during my 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 engagement so um, I, I just finished actually from from a tv interview with the dubai tv uh, here in dubai and it was about uh, what what the visitors are expecting you know to see in in in, in expo 2020 in terms of technologies in terms of uh, innovations in terms of um, ai robotics and all that um, so just finished the interview came back here to to the office uh, my office here in smart world um, in dubai south all right so um, I've, uh, after last week, I've communicated, you know, with my mentees, and I'm not sure if we have some of them, you know, today joining us into this session here. Uh, but I have uh, sent uh, a file um, about, you know, what what considered to be a good submission for a hack or for an idea. Uh, and I'm happy to share this again. Uh, um, and, and I got, you know, uh, feedback from uh, most of the mentees uh, that I've communicated with that they're going to look into it and they're going to improve their uh, submission uh, accordingly. Um, if, if there is any of those mentees today with us here wants to ask a question, uh, I'm, uh, I'm happy to answer your question. Otherwise, I can just go over those hacks that were submitted and I have about um, I think five or six of them and and uh, well, those were you know good ideas uh, but again uh, they lack you know a lot of uh, uh, you know a lot of information uh, and I have communicated to each one of you you know what is what is that you need to focus on and 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 improve your uh, your submission uh, and improve your uh, your hack idea, so we can go to the um, uh, 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 to the next round. Uh, most of those hacks were lacking, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, business plan. Okay, 
what is it you know how you tie up your idea uh, to how you're gonna execute it uh, to how you're gonna make it profitable uh, uh, to how you're gonna you know uh, implement it uh, who is your partnering with who are your you know, customers uh, what is what is really your solution? How your solution uh, is differentiated from the competitors, uh, and all those um, you know details. What's the opportunity? What is the market size that you are looking for? Uh, uh, um, um, what is the business model? You know, uh, and 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 the pricing and the cost for uh, for for the service or for the for the product that um, uh, uh, that you're developing. So, so uh, I think those are the main important points which I have put them into a file and have sent it uh, to you. Uh, and I, if there is any question, I'll be happy to answer. I think there is uh, maybe something here in the chat. Um, hello, Dr. Said. Once we have gone through your feedback, do we email back our revised paper? Uh, yes, I would. I, I would love to see uh, you know um, how you improve your hack. Um, because after all this mentoring sessions, which I think will last for another probably two or three rounds, uh, then your idea will be will be judged by uh, by 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 us by 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 the judging panel. So uh, I would love to see how you improve your idea or hack based on the feedback uh, that I have provided to you. Um, uh, I don't have anything to really speak about more. Uh, I'm here probably to you know to listen to you guys those my mentees and if you have any further question or you have anything you want to ask about uh, um, I'll be more than happy um, I haven't have made any presentation I think the presentation from from Noor and what Noor has talked about really you know you need to take it and put it really into your mind because after all uh, uh, it's not an easy to be an entrepreneur and and I've said this before. Uh, you want to be successful inter entrepreneur. You need to be persistent with your idea. You need to be. Uh, you need you 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 need to have this mindset of the growth mindset, the moonshot mindset. Uh, never you know never give up. You know I I think these are very important because if you look into all those established and well successful you know, um, businessmen who came and, and had established giant, you know, uh, uh, businesses in the world, it wasn't easy for them. And and from each one, you know, you learn, you know, some lessons, how to be persistent, how to go after your dream, how, you know, to convince uh, investors. Uh, I myself at one point, point in time, I, I've been an angel investor and also I'm an entrepreneur. You know, I, I remember when I, first established my internet business. This was before anyone else here in the UAE. It was in 1997, just three years, two years, three years after the internet browser came, you know, came out. The, um, uh, uh, the mosaic, I remember as I was studying in the US in 1993. And I, and I started this business about building websites you know, in the UAE, it was in Dubai, a company called Emitic, Emirates Information Technology. And I had very difficult time trying to convince the government, trying to convince entities, come and we'll build a website for you. And sometimes I had to do it to show them to, to do something free, just to show what does it mean to have a website. Uh, but I kept, you know, uh, 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 after going after this idea until I got really a good uh, support from the Dubai Economic de de Department. Uh, I built the, the 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 website for the Quran Award uh, um, uh, award at that time for the Dubai Shopping Festival in 1997. Imagine Dubai Shopping Festival. So so you need to be persistent and you need to run after what's what's your dream, what's your passion. Okay. Um, sir, I had uh, submitted two projects, but now I don't know which project has been selected. Can you please help me with that? Um, I'm, I don't know. Um, maybe I'm not the right person to answer this. I don't know. Maybe you can speak to the organizing uh, organizing uh, people at the Hack um, uh, Hack Hack Excellence Fest. 
um, Raven Dreeb, because I don't remember that you are, you know, one of my mentees. Um, another question. Uh, OK, uh, great. So uh, if, if there is any further question, please uh, uh, ask your question. Uh, otherwise, I think I'll stop here. Uh, Judy, I'll make it short. And uh, maybe if there are no questions, I think I'll uh, give, give you the stage back, uh, Judy, to continue the, the session. OK, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sahib. So uh, I think we are now, let's see if we already have our third speaker for today, uh, Zaina. Are you here, Mizana? Yeah, hi everyone. Thank you, Judy. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Um, so, yeah, I do agree with, thank you, uh, Dr. Saeed and uh, Mr. Noor for what you guys presented. I do agree with what you guys said, especially when uh, Dr. Noor, when you said it's important with the story to align with the vision, especially if an uh, if, uh, entrepreneur has faced a problem and they're solving the problem, so they would be able to see it both from entrepreneur's perspective and a customer's perspective. Um, I guess I'm going to talk about more on when it comes to um, raising funds and what investors look for um, in this session. So I'm going to start off by um, focusing more on when it comes to, so Dr. Said mentioned the, mo the most important things to focus on, which is the market, the revenue model, and all of that. So I'll go into more a bit more detail just to make it um, more clear to everyone. So when it comes to investors, you should focus on the product and technology, the problem to identifying the problem and what's the solution. Um, having a team with a subject matter expertise and different skill sets, um, for example, tech experts, uh, marketing and sales team, um, and they would like to see whether the team is uh, committed full time or part time and um, how they would be the team is actually able to execute the product uh, again going back to what um, mr noor said about having the vision and believing in the vision of the story itself and actually executing the product and scaling it um, also focusing on the market how big is the is the market and the trendiness of the market what sector you're focusing on uh, what geography or country you're focusing on and Timing is really important as well when you enter the market. So there's a hype cycle where a market is growing or struggling. And then um, also focusing on the competitive landscape. So what differentiates the product from other competitors in the market and what's the competitive advantage of the product? Um, when we talk about also the revenue model, um, how scalable is the model um, and looking at different cost margins based on the sector, um, and whether it's if the model itself makes sense for the customers having subscription or commission based or depending on the on the revenue model itself. Another important thing is um, making sure that you have some traction uh, when presenting investors traction doesn't necessarily mean generating revenue. It could be having testing the product uh, with a few customers, uh, looking at the number of users, the unit economics, the growth and having some sort of traction to present to investors just to show the product market fit. Um, also keeping in mind that identifying the risks, um, the market risks, the financial risks, the regulatory risks, any risks of barriers to entry from competitors in the market. Um, so uh, another thing is uh, some things that why startups may fail uh, is because they maybe they didn't do their research properly before looking into the product, like there's no need uh, of a, such a solution in the market, um, pricing issues, or maybe their pivots went bad, um, or not having the right team on board. Uh, maybe the product is not user friendly, ignoring customers' needs, poor marketing, um, these are some things that that startups may fail with. Uh, what's, uh, what most investors usually ask. So uh, when it comes to the team, 
um, so they would ask you how how have you guys met to just to see how long you guys work together to avoid any conflict in the future. What's the unique value that that uh, the company brings to from their from their team? So they cover basic skills, which again is marketing, uh, management, tech, customer support, and how big is the team and if they're full time or not. So they would want to check if there is any bad hiring or if their burn rate is too high. Um, and I think it's important to always have an elevator pitch. So being able to communicate and inspire a short pitch to investors to understand the product um, in, a short, in a short elevator pitch. And identifying, again, the problem you're solving to have a clear understanding of what the problem is. And if you have proof on solving this problem, it will be great to investors as well. Um, identifying your customers, having a clear idea who, who are the customers that will buy the product. Again, having data to support that would be good. Um, when it comes to the market, they will ask how big is the market to see if, if you know, you need to actually know the difference between the current market and the, the markets in the future. So the vision of the product market, how big or potentially it could, the market size could be. Um, who are the competitors in the market? So a good answer would be to show that you know your competitors, whether what they're doing and what you're not doing and what's, what's better or worse. Um, uh, saying that you don't have any competitors is not a good answer. There's always, uh, whether direct or indirect competitors. Um, and again, knowing the right time for your business. So timing is a big deal. Why is it crucial for you to have this product right now and how it makes sense to to launch a product in the in the right time um, marketing is also important for investors so what marketing methods you use how do you how do you uh, calculate your customer acquisition cost um, and how do you what marketing channels you use to gain those customers and how many new customers you would get potentially when you launch your product and um, again, traction is important to get measuring unit economics, the churn rate, the retention rate. Uh, why are customers churning if they're leaving the product and, and stopped paying? What's the reason? Um, and how, when it comes to revenue, the growth rate of revenue to see how much are you making and how fast it's growing. Um, and then the, with the legal part, um, at a later stage, you'll have to incorporate the company in an offshore jurisdiction because most companies invest in the holding company. Uh, so um, what are the terms and condition? And if you have any previous investors, if there's any conflict with bad terms and condition issues with previous investors. So mostly um, what investors look for is understanding the problem and solution, the team, the market size, the revenue model, traction risks and the, and more on the deal terms and the fundraising side uh, let me know if, if if there's any questions yeah if there's any question you can just write down over there and you can also turn on your microphone uh if i might summarize uh, some tips from Ms. Zena. uh first is to identify the problem and offer the solution i think from uh, the submission, we still struggle to see some of the uh, submissions did not really address what is the problem and then what, what is the solution. So obviously for the investors, they would like to know uh, that matters, right? And also the size of the market. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so maybe uh, I'll just uh, copy paste some of the items that uh, <laughs> I got it uh, from uh, with Zainab, uh, if I miss anything from this point that I put on the on the chat window, in case uh, some of you uh, did not have a chance to write it down. Okay, while waiting for um, those questions to come, I have uh, two announcements to make. Uh, first, the mentor assignment will be done this week. So for those who keep on asking, yes, we are going to assign you mentors by this week. 
Uh, we are still in the process of reviewing um, 99 submissions is uh, not really a small number so we really want to have quality submissions uh, we will categorize that into uh, several buckets like uh, te technology or uh, um, environment and then uh, we will assign you with the mentors with the related mentors and then we will send email to you so you know who will be your mentor and then uh, Keep on joining this workshop or these uh, mentoring sessions every week because um, you will learn a lot of things that you needed uh, to be able to advance to the end. Uh, you will have some uh, assignment. For example, you will need to make a, a video pitch, uh, which we will announce the details later. And you can only do that if you listen to the tips that um, the mentors here are sharing with you, like uh, from Mr. Noor, from Ms. Zainab, uh, from Dr. Zayed, and last week from um, Dr. Simon. There's a lot of uh, important information that you need to include in such a short period of time to do your video pitch. Um, and also you may want to use some prototypes to explain about your ideas. So, Keep on joining this session. Make sure you don't miss. If you have to miss it, make sure that uh, any of your other team members join in this session. Right. Uh, let's take a look if there's any question. Ankit, will we have a sort of one-on-one -on -one meeting with our respective mentors? No, uh, you don't have one-on-one -on -one mentoring, but you will have an email access to your mentor that uh, they can. Uh, answer. The reason why we, we don't have that is because this is a worldwide event and the event is, uh, well, the time just don't suit. Sometimes it's, uh, it's good for you, not good for the mentor. It's good for the mentor, it's not good for you. Maybe you're in school, maybe you're uh, somewhere else. So uh, due to that, we do an email uh, mentoring. Okay, uh, for our project with physical prototype, could I start working on it and share it and plan with my mentor in the next session with that? Yes, of course, uh, you can work with uh, anything as long as pay attention to those items that uh, Ms. Zainab just mentioned. Uh, even before building something, you have to do research. You, you want to make sure that um, is there any other products already out there? You want to research about that. What is the advantage of your uh, products as compared to the rest of, of the similar item in the market? Right. OK. Uh, let me see if I missed anything up there. How many total participants are there? There are 99 participants, 99 submissions, not, not, not necessarily 99 people, right? Because submissions can be in a group. OK. Um, the total winner, um, we will go down like uh, for the or from all into the top 10 and then we'll go down and we have not decided to how many of them. If the, if the ideas are really good and you're doing really a good job, then we may end up with more winners than what uh, we anticipated. So, yeah. Uh, what if I made a solution to a small problem, something like Apple Watch, we didn't really need it first, but still no people buy it. Well, uh, again, Ahmad Abid uh, is a nice, it doesn't matter whether it's a small or big, but how much impact you will make with your invention. If your invention have uh, impact and have advantages over the existing solution, I'm sure you'll be successful. Uh, what is the last date of the project submission and how do we submit? Well, uh, stay tuned and we will let you know how you submit. So as mentioned uh, in the announcement before, uh, you will be given an assignment um, by next week to make a, a video pitch. All right, based on what will you decide the winners, uh, we have a rubric, we have like a criteria. So there are criteria that we will share with you. So everything will be transparent. If you meet this criteria, then you will go to the next round. Um, if you are not, however, for some reason, you don't, uh, you are not selected to go to the next round, you're still free to join this uh, mentor, mentoring. You're still free to join these sessions to learn from uh, the rest of the mentors. And you can even, if you want, you can align yourself, join to those uh, teams who manage to move further to the next round. Okay, 
Um, Abdul Karim Mohammed said, I'm currently on the planning on unique product that was never done before and the hardware I'm currently wearing is not allowed for ownership in my country, Ethiopia. What shall I do? Uh, well, unfortunately, I cannot help a lot with that because if you are not allowed that in, in your uh, in your country, right? But uh, what you can probably do is uh, do a what if analysis. Uh, you do hypothesis and, and, and simulation if that helps. Okay, uh, I will not be able to show the prototype because it's a little too expensive. Well, if you join next week's session, uh, we will talk about prototyping and prototype not necessarily to be high fidelity prototype. It can be low fidelity prototype, which includes like sketch. Yeah, so there's always uh, many ways of doing prototyping. All right, any any more question from um, Ms. Zainab? or Dr. Said or Mr. Noor. Can a prototype be an animation? Yes, uh, next week we'll talk more about that. How does the video pitch work? Well, next week we'll talk about that. Good that you have an advanced uh, thinking and you are eager to do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you have any question, yes, please. You can open your speaker, uh, your microphone, and speak. Or otherwise, you just type on the chat. Hello. Uh, yes, Abdul Karim. Yeah, I have a question for Mr. Noor. One more yes. question. Uh, 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 the project I'm working uh, now is uh, needed to build a, a J offense for the. The, uh, the to work on it, and I, I am currently building a, a geofence. If uh, you are uh, familiar with that, uh, and that geofence is uh, uh, can be just manipulated for other projectors. So, uh, how can I I, uh, I do this without uh, losing my first project and the second project? Uh, how can uh, I address this? Simultaneously, thank you. Uh, Mr. Noor, if you're still here, I think if I may rephrase the question, uh, Abdul Karim has submitted this project. I, yeah. I lost the connection for a second. Can you repeat the question? Sure, sure. Okay. So he has, um, he has an idea. Yeah, go ahead, Abdul Karim. Yeah, I have uh, a project that I have submitted, and uh, that project is uh, can be built on a geofence. The geofence is uh, a virtual uh, fence. I understand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that uh, geofence can be used for uh, my other ideas and uh, projects. So how can I? Uh, ca ca how can I? Uh, I simultaneously do these projects from your experience. How, how can you what? What's the last part of your question? I'm currently uh, do these products. OK, so how do you develop them, you mean? Yeah, without losing the first uh, project, uh, how can I progress to the next uh, while I'm doing the first project? Within this program, or you mean as, a, as an idea or as a product? Uh, as a generally. OK, so whenever you're building a product or a solution, you need to understand uh, there's two ways to build it. The first one is to build a product because you've got a great idea. Or the other one is to build a solution because you know there's a problem. So what is the problem that you're solving? Pardon? What is the problem? That your project project is solu solving. The solu what is the solution? What is it solving? The yeah, the problem is uh, gun violence. Okay. And the solution is uh, a smart gun. Smart gun against gang violence, right? Yes. Okay. So this gun will do what it will eliminate the ability of somebody else to shoot it is that the idea mm, yeah uh, the smart gun uh, will uh, uh, will be uh, gps monitored 
uh, and uh, locationally restricted uh, to where it uh, works or not to work. And uh, it, it will be ma uh, manipulated by the user or the government, or uh, it can be used uh, for private institutions not to work in their, uh, in their perimeter. Uh, that's uh, the idea. Okay, so I want you to think of a couple of things. How are you going to communicate the data from the, to the phone, to the gun all the time? Uh, and then how does this create a solution to gang violence? You don't have to come up with the with the with the prototype. What you have to come up with is a compelling story, and you'll find that many companies will fund or many investors will fund a compelling story. So, what is the problem you're solving? I want you to think about that very thoroughly and define it. Meaning, okay, not just oh, companies can control it. Why? What are you going to prevent? How are you going to prevent? What value is it to society? For example, I want you to research how many gun-related deaths in your area and how many of them are in within a specific geographic location and, you know, how would you resolve this? That kind of thing, all right? To be able to build yes. this. I have already uh, researched uh, it. Uh, it. It is not meant for uh, my my community, actually, it is for uh, for the develop uh, the developed world like uh, USA and Europe. That uh, uh, for for my research, uh, uh, every year there, there is a 500. Uh, every day there is a 500 days days uh, accounted for this gun violence, and uh, a lot of a lot of this come from childless uh, playing with a gun without a safety so uh, if if my idea persists there will be there will be no uh, gun violence uh, or suicides because uh, there will be a restrict the users can restrict their guns in their home perimeter that i i will uh, be doing with a geo reference so uh, that's uh, Okay, so I want to, I'm going to ask you some questions to challenge your idea. Okay. 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 Uh, and I want you to, you don't have to answer them now, just think about these. First, okay. is that okay. to solve this problem, that means you have to replace every gun existing. Or are you saying no, as an owner of the gun, me as the owner, I am able to change or modify where the gun can work and not. So it's kind of like a geofence safety. Uh, how would I configure it, that kind of thing. So I want you to consider, to think about how scalable it is, how possible it is to do this from a technology perspective, and what's the value, would people want it? I mean, you're, you're talking about a, a very sensitive subject, especially for the US, for Americans. You know, don't, don't touch my gun. <laughs> for Americans, that's what... <laughs> Uh, talking about gun restrictions or uh, it's a constitutional right. I mean, the, the entire government of the United States hasn't done this. Now, I, I also researched Kalashnikov. They just released the first smart gun in the world. The Kalashnikov, the company that makes the AK-47, they just released it days ago. So read about what they've done as well. Uh, it's a noble cause, but I want you to look more into the drivers and the value you provide what what will i get as an owner if i if i were to get it what would it be as an incentive for a government maybe it's better for police forces that's how you can implement this on a wider scale um you know uh, maybe a gun that uh, combines geofencing with fingerprinting to, as a safety lock i don't know uh, research it and what uh, when you apply i want you to think about what is the best application for scale so if this is for users, how many people will want to buy your gun? But if you can say that 90% of police forces say that they wish they could do X and this gun can do X, and there are, you know, then you can sell 200,000 guns to, to a police force like this. So think about how you can create the scalability of an idea like that. Thank you very much. Anytime. Okay. Any more questions? 
Okay, so if there's no more question, I think uh, we can conclude the session for today. Thank you so much for Mr. Noor Al Nahas and Dr. Said and also Ms. Zainab. So yes. keep those questions coming. For, for you who join as guests, uh, you may want to copy paste some of the information on the chat window because once you log out, you might not be able to uh, see those chat again if you see there are some uh, good information. Otherwise, uh, you will also be able to watch the recording session um, of this session and we will send the link to the recording later on. Thank you so much and see you again next week. Thank you. Bye -bye.